I'm the communications committee chair. Uh, so I have the pleasure of really just guiding the conversation today. But uh, most importantly, we have uh, four excellent panelists who are going to walk us through their, what they're currently doing from a marketing and PR standpoint. Uh, we're going to give you some real world examples. And then really the main goal of today's conversation is to get input from other people, uh, share some best practices, and hopefully walk away with a few things that uh, we can put to use in our own companies tomorrow. Uh, so with the panel... Uh, I'm gonna let the panelists uh, introduce themselves uh, as we come through, but just to let you know who is, uh, who they are. We have Jason Price, uh, Kayla McAllister, Allison Terranova, and Patricia Chuagos. So with that, uh, I'm gonna, uh, let's go to the next slide here, and Kayla is going to kick it off here. I do wanna let you guys know, feel free to, you know, ask questions, talk, share, uh, whatever you need. Uh, if you like, you can, as you're all familiar now, you can raise your hand by going in the, if you go to the participants um, button on the bottom of your screen, you can either raise your hand there uh, and I will do my best to call on you in a, uh, you know, in, in due time, or you can click the chat button at the bottom uh, and ask a question and then I will um, get to that as well when uh, time is appropriate. So uh, with that, um, Kayla, I'll let you kick it off. Hey, thanks, Frank. All right, I'm Kayla McAllister. I'm an Associate Marketing Coordinator at Century Realty Corfac International. Um, I joined with Century in July 2015. Um, our office is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we also have another office in Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, I assist the brokerage team in servicing clients, and in addition, I also specialize in developing marketing and web-based materials that are utilized by the uh, brokerage team. Um, prior to joining Century, I spent four years in a marketing and administrative role at Colliers International Pittsburgh, which was formerly um, NAI Pittsburgh Commercial. All right, so on the screen there, um, we're going to be talking about staying top of mind with clients. Um, so obviously with COVID-19, um, we've had to kind of adapt what we're doing to kind of fit um, the situations going on. So we have created some specialized blasts to stay in contact with our clients. So on the screen, we have a couple of examples. Um, the first one there kind of just gives an update to our clients about um, us working remotely and how we're here to help. Um, and then the next one there um, is just mainly for 1031 exchange buyers. Um, some of our clients um, do participate in 1031 exchanges. So once the IRS kind of announced that they were going to be doing an extension for it, um, we wanted to kind of do a um, detailed blast on it, um, just kind of outlining the new um, guidelines for it. Um, and then the last, the last picture there just kind of goes over um, what our services are. Um, this way, if anyone kind of has any needs now, they can reach out to us directly and we can kind of help them or even give them advice for anything that they need, so. Um, and then the other thing we're also doing, um, just real quick, is we are reaching out to our clients directly just to see if they have any issues or if there's anything we can help them with, um, specifically for landlords for our office listings, um, if they have any like move-in ready suites available. Um, we're like suggesting to like blast that out. Um, obviously, if there's any immediate requirements um, for people downsizing, looking for lower rents, and people looking for the social distancing layouts. Um, we've also sent along some articles and documents to some of our clients, um, just stuff that's relevant to their situation. For example, ways to adapt to the new COVID-19 guidelines. Um, Overall, we seem to receive like very positive feedback from the clients as a result. Um, the main point we're trying to get across is just letting our clients know that we're here to help and provide guidance during this pandemic. Uh, thank you, Kayla. Um, and just so you guys all know, we are, we're gonna go through and kind of, we have a few topics we're gonna cover and We'll ask some, we'll try to first topic here and then I'll get to some of the questions. So, and you want to share next slide is uh, some of the stuff that uh, CPI is doing as well. 
Uh, hello, my name is Jason Price. I work for Commercial Properties Incorporated out of Tempe, Arizona. That's where our headquarters is at. We have an office in Scottsdale as well. Um, we have been in the commercial real estate realm since 1981. And our firm is a full service brokerage. So we have a whole property management arm as well as a brokerage team of about 60, 60 uh, two agents. There's probably about 60 that are active. So, <laughs> um, but this is what you're looking at here. It's an advertising campaign that I to uh, identify owners that have issues with empty spaces. Um, we do about two and a half times uh, the leasing and transaction rate that our competitors do in the market. So we're really trying to emphasize that if they need help, we will help them. Um, and we're trying to show like, here's some issues with office where you have a problem where you've got an empty suite and, and the results are that we'll help you fill it. Uh, same thing with the industrial. This is an ongoing campaign that we're, we're rolling out right now. Um, we're trying to stay positive on our social media channels and we're also being proactive on tours and things like that but i think we'll get more into that sorry i'm clicking um, um awesome thank you jason um allison you want to share what uh, you guys are doing and Sure. Really? Yes. Hi, I'm Allison Terranova. I'm with Patterson Woods Commercial Properties. We're um, in Wilmington, Delaware, also a full service commercial real estate firm. Um, we've been really putting a focus on branding and just making sure our clients and prospective clients know that we're still active. And we're still doing deals to the extent that we can and, and doing um, virtual tours and and just really being a resource for, for people right now. Um, we have been writing articles and putting up webinars and just showing that um, we're here for people during the good times and the trying times and um, try to put out information that's helpful and also comforting. Um, on the screen here, you see a restaurant client e-blast. Um, we gathered all of our restaurant clients that are offering takeout or delivery service right now, put them in an email and put a link to their website so that people who can go and get takeout right now, uh, can choose from our client list. Um, we did an email blast to all of our contacts. We put it on our website and on our social media as well. Um, we've done a couple other things, but I think we'll get to them in, in the other slides. Thanks, Austin. Sure. Uh, I had a, there was a question here from Alan, and then also I, I want to maybe dig a little bit deeper, but can you guys share how you're getting this information out uh, obviously, it seems like some of this is going out via social media, but are you, is anybody doing any sort of mailing pieces, um, you, know, you know, direct mail, um, brokers delivering stuff? Um, are there any other ways that you're getting this information out? For us, it's been mostly digital, um, social media, our website, uh, posting things on our website, um, and our email blasts. I would agree with Allison, same thing. Definitely the email blast. I know ours were created through um, constant contact and we're just sending it out to the clients and then posting it on the social media, just anything to get it out there. Yeah, and one thing in our office, we're encouraging our brokers to go through their contact list and send them to me so I can make curated lists and, and make sure that the right emails are going to the right people. We, we manage all our agents' contacts through our email blast campaign program and we're doing the same thing where we're sending things out via email. Uh, we're also promoting these things on Twitter. And then we do have print ads on some of these things that you're seeing as well in conjunction that all support um, everything in, in one uh, effort so that it's reiterated on multiple uh, channels. And that's how we're getting that message out right now. Can can either of you share what some of those social media's num social media numbers look like? How many people you're reaching? You know, are, you, are there certain posts that seem to be more successful than others? 
I don't have anything top of mind, so I would have to look into that a little further. For us, I see the highest engagement on Twitter um, and Instagram, really. Uh, the posts that get more interaction are the ones that aren't necessarily about listings. They're about what our company is doing or sharing some good news. So especially right now, try to keep it really positive and, and if there's any piece of good news, get it out there. Yeah, I would say the top performing things for our business have been um, positive news stories about our employees, things that have made the news that are about people doing good in the community, um, and things that have video on them or video tours. I've been posting those on Twitter and I get a huge response. So I'm talking like 700 people, 750 people looking at it and engaging with it, which is really great. I'm going to open this up. I, I don't want this to just necessarily be, you know, the four or five of us talking. So if anybody else has any constructive ideas or practices that you're doing uh, that you found to be very successful um, throughout this entire thing, uh, share. Um, with that, um, I'm going to switch over to marketing our listings during this period of time. Uh, I can tell you personally, from our standpoint, we're getting more questions about marketing. Uh, we were in a hot market. Marketing had kind of you know, we, we did it, but it had kind of fallen by the wayside. And now our clients are obviously paying you know, very, very close attention to how things are being marketed. We're going to touch a little in a little bit here uh, on some tools and some things here that are being done uh, to market them. But uh, first off, uh, I'll let Kayla go and, and kind of share what uh, they're doing. Okay, so right now to market our listings, um, we're still actively reaching out to our clients and regularly sending the email blasts for our property listings. Um, we're also still sending our requirement blasts and submitting any properties for client requirements that we receive. Um, we're continually sharing these blasts on our social media websites, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Um, another helpful tool that we've been doing is posting our listings on the Facebook groups to target specific areas. This way we're you know, reaching maybe more clients that may not be seeing it on like LoopNet, CoStar, or any of those um, sites. Um, and then we have several listings that provide move-in ready suites. So um, the examples on the screen kind of show that. So we're just kind of pushing the idea that we have um, move-in ready suites that can, can accommodate the social distancing requirements due to COVID-19. I mean, obviously there's gonna be needs for people looking for new spaces, um, downsizing, um, different layouts for the office space. So those are a couple of our examples. Go, go for it, Allison. Sorry. So um, one thing I wanted to point out, um, we're all going through this and for me, it was a challenge to come up with the right language um, to push out to our clients and prospective clients. So one thing that I have done, and I've done this before when working on other projects, is go to other CoreFAC member firms' websites, social media pages, and just draw inspiration from them. Um, the message that I really liked, I found on Burger Commercial, so thanks to them for, for their language. Um, so they have it as a banner on the top of their website saying that they're still open and can still help you during this time. So we did a similar message and, um, and look. So. I'm constantly drawing inspiration from other Corfac firms and also from the, the Corfac portal. Copy, paste, it's a, a great resource. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to use other Corfac member firms as a resource. Uh, I'd be remiss as well if I didn't mention that if you do go and you'll see at the end of this and you've seen the emails come out from uh, Jonathan that there is a huge war chest of materials at the CORFAC level where people have shared different blasts, different letters, different templates um, and things that um, feel free to go there, take a look at them and copy them. That's why they're there. Um, I just also want to touch, if we go to the next slide here, um, some low cost ways to restart. I know all of us right now are a little hesitant to go spend big marketing dollars or um, you know, sp spend money in general. Uh, so I'd love for uh, 
one of you to kind of address. These are just a few examples on this screen. Um, particularly, I love uh, what um, what Alan's doing and, and seems to be very consistently posting uh, out there, you know, getting po you know, positive information and being a resource uh, for people with what to do. Um, but I'd love for um, somebody other than me to kind of share what they're doing and, um, you know, because obviously social media is free. So go for it. Jason, you're up. <laughs> I thought you were asking for the members to chime in. Sorry. Um, so what we're doing is we're really trying to stay positive, tell people how we can help them, what are the services we offer, um, and just try and stay engaged with the audience. So I'm trying to put something out, if not daily, every other day, um, that has a positive impact on um, things in our community. The, the messaging has changed because it's less transactional, right? So it's, it's not everything is about, oh, hey, we closed this deal, we closed this deal, we closed this deal. People are more responsive to, well, how can you help me today? What, what can you do for me um, in my time of need right now? And how can you be uh, of service to me and help me either fill up my space and things like that? So we're, we're putting out thought leadership pieces with our property management um, leadership. And we're doing things with um, positive news stories with our employees. And then things where I have video, where we've got video on showcasing a property, those, those are things that are low cost. And I say they're low cost because we've pulled some of that in house um, where we have a video editor and I know you don't all have that, but it's um, something that we saw a big demand for. And actually the data that was given to me was that anything that has a video um, gets a 2000% increase in viewership on CoStar and LoopNet right now. Uh, which was some incredible numbers that I've never heard before. That's interesting. Does any, and I, I want to open this up, if anybody else has any things they want to share, by no means want this to be um, us talking to you. I'd love to hear from the rest of the members, uh, anybody who's on, who's on this call who has some insight and wants to share, uh, please, uh, I got Don Aussie with his hand up. Thank you, Don. No, I was just going to su suggest one thing I did was reached out to the Business Journal. We all have relationships with the with the media, and I just offered myself as a resource for him. And he goes, "God, oh, that's a great idea." And he called me. We did about a fifteen minute interview, and it turned into a exclusive article in the Business Journal. And then for two hundred and seventy five dollars, they released the link to me so I could post it on social media and website and so forth. So pretty inexpensive way to uh, get yourself in front of your world as an expert. Yeah, I would agree that just getting a, an article out there is pretty much free and it's the best way to get exposure and talk about what's going on in the market near you or, or what you see forecasting. So it's a great way to, to get out there without a high cost. That was my one good idea for the year and it's only May, I'm done. You can check out now, Don. I'm out. Drop the mic. <laughs> Don, did you get any, Don, did you get anybody to follow up on you with that? Uh, on LinkedIn, I noticed there were uh, so far 1,500 views of the, of the um, reprinting of the article. And I had several phone calls from clients just uh, thanking me for the insight. Uh, yeah, has not turned into a transaction, but solidifying relationships and just being out there in front of the world is important. Absolutely. Yeah, I know Patricia is going to talk in a little bit just about their good practices from a PR standpoint as well. Um, Chris, you mind going on the next slide here? Um, as, as usual, we always need to have a picture of Haim um, in all of our presentations. So we just wanted, that's the only reason we actually included that one. 
but uh, I, I thought I was the only one that got the email from Haim. I thought that was personally directed to me. <laughs> You're that special. Um, but um, I don't know. Are you on this call, Haim? Maybe, maybe not. Um, if you do unmute yourself, I can't necessarily list here. I uh, would love to kind of hear your approach there. I'd love for anybody who has any ideas uh, as far as reaching your target audience, whether it's sending out emails, um, whatever it might be, uh, please share those. Um, I, I have another where somebody can you know, potentially address. I think Jason, this is part of what your next slide here. Um, which is what are people doing for video and virtual tours? So maybe we'll just transition over to that, Jason, and let you kind of hear what you're doing and what equipment that requires. That was one of the questions. Yeah, so um, what you're looking at on the screen is it's a Matterport tour. Um, we don't have that technology in our office. That's a pretty expensive camera that does a 360 degree turn and, and tours you through the building but we are connected with local photographers that do have those tools and are invested in them. So this was a um, very high end office. Um, the pricing on this was about $300 for up to 10,000 square feet for a virtual tour. And as you can see, you can click on the little highlighted areas and it pulls you through the building, which gives the, the person looking at the space full control over how they want to walk through it, what they want to see. And it really um, increases the engagement on that listing. So we are linking these things directly to our PDFs for our brochures where we're, um, we're opening those things up to them where they have access all over the world. So people may not be able to come in and physically tour the space or fly to the state and they can now go online and, and go through it. Um, if you've got smaller spaces, they typically charge about $50 for up to 2000 square feet, uh, which is pretty reasonable. And I think if you're talking with a, an owner who's open to that, sometimes they share in the costs with you on those things. Um, with things where we have tools inside where we'll do a just a a walkthrough with your iphone or um we have a, a nikon camera that we have video capability on and we'll take video with that as well and we can edit that down with just some adobe um, software in our office and just throw some music behind it so that it looks nice. So it doesn't always have to be high end. I think it's, it's more important that you just do it. Uh, find a way to capture the space and showcase it and create some action. And it doesn't have to be super fancy. It's, it's more important that you just do it because people are consuming that uh, more so right now than anything. There was a question, Jason. Can you repeat what that what you're paying for that, and then also, can you t speak to how long it takes to um, have this Matterport done? Yeah. So for for Matterport, um, small spaces, uh, two thousand square feet, cost about one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, for this space that you're seeing on the screen, this was closer to a twelve thousand square foot space. Um, but they gave us a rate of $300 uh, up to 10,000 square feet. So it, it should be somewhat similar in every market. Um, I would imagine if you reach out to some local photographers, you'll find out that they have this tool and, and that you can utilize it for, you know, much less than going out and investing in the equipment yourself. Um, even if you just have your iPhone or an iPad, you can capture video and do sort of a walkthrough and you don't even have to talk. But again, it was $300 up to 10,000 square feet. And uh, for smaller spaces up to 2,000 square feet, it's about 150 bucks. 
I wanted to throw in there too that LoopNet premium ads now include Matterport. So if, if you have done those before or are interested in them, you can purchase them on a one-off basis for your property. Um, the pricing will vary based on where you are and the size of the building. So just reach out to your LoopNet rep, but it does include Matterport capability now. There was a question. Um, Go ahead. Well, COEO was also, um, I'm not sure what all markets that's in right now, but they have like move-in ready suites. Um, that's kind of their focus. But I think they were expanding to all property types. But I know a couple months ago, they were reaching out directly to um, anyone who had listings on there and they were offering free videos. So I don't know if it's like a limit, like one per company or how they were doing it, but that's always an option as well. That's great insight. I, there was a question, um, and I'm very curious, has anybody done this for industrial? Yeah, um, so industri industrial okay, spaces. Ahead, Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, the uh, industrial spaces actually have not slowed down in our market at all in terms of people wanting to see those. Um, and we get a, a lot more activity. We get a lot more activity on the industrial spaces than anything right now um, in terms of people wanting to look at those. I would agree with Jason too. Definitely industrial is getting more activity right now than the other um, property types. The reason I was late to this call is because I was showing 185,000 square foot industrial building to a group of 11 people. We all had PPE and it was amazingly, the demand is staggering. Um, there was, sorry, I don't know the name of this, uh, Bernota, um, about talk, speaking about using iPhones with the Osmo modal mobile gimbal. Um, you mind sharing what you're using there to do these tours? S. Bernota. Sorry. I'm not sure that she's on the call. That's uh, I'm Mike Foyerman with Burger Commercial oh, Realty. Okay. Stephanie Bernota is our um, marketing director. So I, I don't, I didn't see her on the call. Oh, it says she's having audio issues. So she just posted that there's a, she posted a link if you look in the chat for a um, DJI, it's like a, um, I just pulled it up on my screen. It's kind of a stabilizer. Um, you know, gimbal that you can hold and take video while walking through a space to do it yourself. So, we, and we'll share all of this afterwards, but apparently uh, she's having audio issues. So it seems like there's multiple ways to go about doing this and different cost levels as well. Um, with that, Jason, you wanna talk about uh, the other kind of tech fun technology stuff that you guys are doing as well? Yeah, um, we're, we're really lucky to have um, somebody who has a license to fly a drone and they are able to throw their drone up in the air when we have spaces that are not next to airports. <laughs> um, we have had some situations where we can not get clearance to even lift off um, because they're too close to an air park or an airport. But in most instances, you can fly a property and get a really good overview of what's around the building, what's, how close is it to um, freeways and connectivity for intermodal needs. Um, a lot of my industrial guys are really embracing this and showcasing you know, their, their buildings and, and the retail team as well likes to showcase how many vehicles per day, um, what, how many households are around the area so that you can really get a sense of the community surrounding these properties. Um, this, this one on the screen here is just some footage that we took with the drone and then we overlaid all these graphics in uh, an Adobe editing program um, to highlight everything and showcase the space. Um, we charge our agents $350 
to do this uh, because it does take a considerable amount of effort to schedule with the you know the tenants the landlords get out there take the footage um, it's about a it's about a three to five day turnaround on some of these videos just because of all the different things people want to showcase and edit and highlight um, but once once we get it down it's it it looks really nice and you get a nice overview of of the whole site i think they're going to provide a link to this because it probably won't play real well um, in the meeting so we can all look at it later if you want to look at the links that they provided Jason, what software are you using to do the overlay? Any questions on that? Jason, what software are you using to do the overlays on the video? So currently we have uh, Adobe Creative Suite and we're using Premiere um, to do the overlays. That's what I use as well, Premiere. Um, so, Jason, I, I would have a question. Mirela Raikuitz from Romania, Bucharest. If I'm yes, how are you? How are you? all of you guys uh, out there across the ocean. You mentioned earlier that um, uh, the listings that, are, uh, that uh, contain a video uh, have uh, significantly more views than uh, the, links that, the listings that do not contain a video. Have you test? I, I think the number was 2,000 more, if I got correctly this. Have you experienced this and checked yourself? We are on the point of uh, uh, remaking our entire website. And uh, we have this question on top of our mind. How much is it worth investing into the video technology? In Europe, it's, it's not quite a standard nowadays, but we want to be a bit ahead of times. If you can tell me if you had uh, validated this in practice. Um, I definitely. <laughs> Whoa, sorry, I had some bad audio there. Um, we're definitely getting an increased response and our agents are directly getting contacts from these videos um, on multiple levels. So I'm, I'm not just relying on CoStar and LoopNet. We're all so putting the Crexy, I don't know if any of you are Crexy, um, but uh, it's another listing service here that allows you to put video and pictures. Um, and the data that I quoted came directly from my um, marketing rep there at um, CoStar who handles all our listings. Um, we import and export our listings every week and take stuff down, put stuff up, make changes. And he's telling me that what he's seeing is that there's a 2000% increase in activity on the listings that have video compared to those that don't. Um, it also helps that we are um, putting stuff on CoStar and LoopNet as silver listings. Um, you know, if you don't have those as set as silver, then they're not really showing up. And so if you have video and it's not silver, at least, which is the, the bare minimum, then it's, it's not really doing you any good. So you have to unfortunately invest in that platform that way. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. So this is a real figure from practical reality. It's uh, encouraging and inspiring for our uh new development. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You're welcome. There was, there was a question here about build out. Um, I know a lot of our members use build out. Um, I know it's been discussed at conferences, but does anybody have any you know, tips or tricks as it relates to utilizing build out that they want to share? I would say take advantage of their syndication ability so you can log into 
several different listing platforms. And then when you post to build out, it will automatically push it out to those platforms. So you don't have to log into each one and post your listing. I think that's the most helpful thing with build out for me. And Frank, this is Jonathan. Um, so we have a member discount through build out, not to turn this into a build out commercial, but um, they offer a discount to all Corfac firms. Also, we, we did something with them starting last September, which is called Build Out Sync. And whether or not you're a member of Build Out or not, you can post your listings on the Corfax site through Build Out Sync at no cost. That's great to know. Um, that slide, Christy. Um, I love for some of our panelists to kind of dive a little deeper into this, but I, you know, maybe some constructive conversation about, you know, what platforms are being used, how you're marketing. I know we've talked about LoopNet, BuildOut, um, Crexy, um, some of these other um, listing services, but, but on the flip side, does anybody have anything they want to share as far as being able to reach tenants? Um, you know, obviously I get emails, I feel like weekly from somebody, you know, claiming to have great lists uh, for potential clients. Uh, but does anybody have anything they want to share on that front? One platform that the, some of the agents in our office have been using is HelloSign. Um, it's like DocuSign, but it's much more affordable. Um, so that's just a website that I would encourage you to look into if you're looking for a digital signature platform. Yeah, we've we've just started a trial at Burger Commercial with uh, Zoom Info, and um, I don't know if anybody here uses that or something like it, but it uh, seems to be a great tool to get contact information by company. Um, it didn't seem all that wonderful about creating lists, uh, although it does create lists. I've found that, and others have found that if you create a list elsewhere, like on CoStar, um, or database USA, um, you uh, can then cross check for the contact information and it brings you right to a company. It'll show you the CEO, CFO, um, various employees. It gives their direct number. It gives their mobile number, their email, their addresses. Seems to be pretty accurate and a pretty good tool. Does anybody else have experience with Zoom info or something similar? And you asked about contacting tenants. That's been a good way to get accurate information to reach out. How, do you mind sharing how much we had looked into that at one point, um, and it seemed like it was at least the price we were quoted was you know in the tens of thousands of dollars on annual basis. Um, is that the case, or are they starting to loosen up their uh, pricing? Well, so it's funny. We just went over that this morning. Um, their quote was something like, um, Stephanie, are you on? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. You okay. want to go over pricing they proposed? Um, yes. They basically, they're willing to work with you, but for the first five users, it's $25,000. And if you split that up, I believe it comes to about four sixteen a month per user. Now, they're willing to give us, um, I believe, up to 11 licenses for about 32 and change with working in some free accounts. I think it came down to, for 11 accounts, um, 200 and about $245 a month per user. But you have to buy in bulk. I don't know, Stephanie, if they would consider um, Corfac an account. And if we get enough people from enough firms, we can ramp up take advantage of that bulk discount. That's a great idea. Yeah, would, would anybody be open to that or opposed to it? That'd be interesting to hear and what, uh, what they might do on a larger, bigger package. Yeah, Mike. You can also, sorry, reach out to them right now. They're being really um, giving with their trials. So they're giving us a nice package with a nice um, export credit amount. So our team was actually able to go in there and do some digging around and testing it out. 
it, it was great. I think it was great. It was very informative. It's just the price point, I think, is, is going to hang a lot of people up if you're buying it for just a handful of users. Yeah. So you're talking about you're talking about Zoom info, right? Yeah. Yeah. How accurate are you finding that data to be? And are you actually sending stuff out to those people and getting responses back? Yeah, so um, I'm personally doing a sort of blend and extend email and overview about um, what we're doing to help people with blend and extend, you know, generally speaking, when landlords might be open to it, if you have a need for it as a tenant. I'm a tenant rep broker, so um, just reaching out to tenants on my target list, I've found that, you know, I've updated many of my contacts, getting very few bounce backs, and when I call people, um, I'm much more likely to get their direct dial number or their extension rather than being caught in that sort of voicemail void where you get lost and you try to dial by name and you can't get it. This has been saving a lot of time and going to one website to look for all the contacts has been helpful. It also has a gr uh, Google Chrome extension. So if you're on someone's website, you click it and it opens up their profile or if you're on someone's LinkedIn profile. So it's pretty fast. I've found it to be pretty accurate to answer your question. Um, but I'd be very interested to talk to them about doing um, a CORFAC um, group. And, and uh, Jonathan, is that something you'd be willing to work with us on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anybody on the call, if you're working with a particular service or product that you think is good and you want to get headquarters involved, happy to help. Yeah, so Stephanie, let's talk to Lloyd about it. Um, and if anybody else is interested, well, certainly I think we need maybe nine or 10 to get that, you know, the highest level discount, nine or 10 licenses. Excuse me, is yeah. anyone, is anyone uh -huh. check how secure the information is when it goes on to Zoom? Because I had a techie tell me that it's, it's pretty wide open. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, you have to be a member, a paid member to get, you know, certain information. Um, uh, my understanding in talking with the owner of our firm is that you gather a lot of information by scraping it from emails. So they give some people a right to use it free, but you get only a couple of um, downloads of information per month and, you know, maybe two or five or something as opposed to having a thousand a month when you're a paid member and in exchange for being a free member you let them see your emails and scrape information from the signature block which i personally find a little intrusive i mean a lot of this stuff is confidential who is zoom you know, that my, who is zoom and and, and what, what do they do with our information i guess that's my question well they're selling it yeah so yeah. that's a question i mean how secure the information is i guess yeah I don't, I don't know. It's not like they're giving social security numbers, but, and I don't, I don't typically call someone on their cell phone anyway, unless I know them or we've exchanged emails or, you know, I just really need to get them and can't get them. And you're taking a chance, but um, it could backfire, but I, I found it to be a good tool. It's the new co-star. You give, you give them their, inf the information and they sell it back to you. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and they charge a lot for it. It's <laughs> kind of simple. Michael, one brief question. Uh, if you have been using this Zoom info, uh, which I studied at a certain moment also, and I was interested, uh, my question is how accurate do you find the information there? Like 70%, 50%, 90%? I found it very accurate. I mean, I, I couldn't pin a number on it. I've only been using it on a trial basis for about um, a week, um, but more accurate and more detailed than anything else I've tried, much more so than CoStar. Um, you know, the CoStar data is pretty old and not all that accurate to begin with. Um, I found this to be pretty up to date. There were a couple instances where I'll cross check what they have with the firm's website and it'll be a little bit different. Maybe somebody left a couple months ago, but for the most part, it's pretty, it's one of the most accurate services of its kind that I've used. I'd just be interested to know if anyone else has used it or if anyone has used something similar that you found valuable, because we're not you know, committed at this price point for 16 a month to, to going forward. 
maybe if we get a group together here and we can get it down to the 215 or 225 a month, that's more palatable. But uh, anybody use something similar or use this one? I don't know if people are responding in the chat. Um, There's a few we've questions used. in there about Hoover's. So somebody brought up Hoover's as being an alternative or Dun & Bradstreet. Uh-huh. How does the pricing compare? I think it's... Uh, it's uh, year for three years. Um, yep. That's pretty good. Right here. So that's Andrea Jones. Andrea, was, was Hoover's pretty accurate? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll distribute this information to everyone and um, you know, we can do research and they can follow up, but we'll, we'll also distribute these comments uh, so everyone has that. Uh, I do want to leave a moment to have, um, have Patricia speak a little bit about PR uh, and what she's doing there and give us some tips and tricks to uh, you know, add to what Mr. Aussie said earlier. So I'll hand it over to you, Patricia. Hi. Hey, everybody. Um, I've worked with a lot of you, I've been with Corfax since the end of 2017, um, working on the PR, or on behalf of them for their PR efforts. Um, a little bit about me, I've been doing uh, public relations in the commercial real estate world for about 22 years now. Started my career in Chicago and five years ago, my family relocated to Los Angeles. So uh, most of my career was spent in Chicago very familiar family there, um, but now I've, for the past five years, have been in Los Angeles. So um, one of the things that I will, you know, applaud Don on is um, he already had the media connection, so he reached out to them to see if they would like more information from him or to see if he could be a source for them. Um, when you already have those media relations established, that's great. Right now, reporters are looking for information they're looking to be the source for information the news source for information um, so if you have any insight not just self-promotion um, they're not looking for that they're looking for boots on the ground you guys are the ones that are out there seeing what's happening in the market seeing um, what's working what's not what 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 tenants are looking for what users are, are looking for um, if the industrial is hot, if it's not. So you guys are the ones that know what's going on and that's what reporters are looking for, especially right now. Um, they are still reporting deals. So if you have, if you have deals, um, maybe you haven't been as successful in the past of getting your deals published in the media, maybe now is your time. Um, because there was a trend when this first, uh, the pandemic first started that we were really COVID heavy. Um, a lot of the news, outlets were just reporting information um, on COVID and, and how it relates and still indirectly related to that, but now we're seeing more deal announcements. So if you do have a big deal and you want an exclusive, it's okay to, to reach out and try to get that exclusive with them. Um, if you don't have the media um, relations already established, if you go to them with, you know, find out who your reporters are. The first thing is to, to know your publications, know your reporters. So research that reporter, see what they've been writing about um, so you can be more educated when you approach them and go to them with a solid pitch, not just, hi, this is who I am. I can offer you this information, but go to them with some, maybe some statistics or what you're seeing or a solid pitch, a solid story that you can offer them. Um, right now, two reporters are working around the clock. So a lot of them will take bylined articles where maybe they weren't doing that in the past. So if you can offer yourself as a source, great. But if you also are willing to write an article and, and to place a byline with them, even better because now might be the time that they'll, that they'll take it. Um, I would also like to put the plug, the PSA in here about checking the CORFAC website for the toolbox. There are templates in there. There are press release templates. There are tools that you can use inside the toolbox. If you're not familiar with the toolbox or how to get that information, definitely reach out to staff, reach out to myself, and we can help you locate that information information and send your deals to us. You know, as you're putting out your press releases, make sure you get your deals to staff. Um, if you have an article published like, uh, like Don did, send that to staff as well. We want to see what people are doing. There is a COVID resource page as well. So if, if people are, um, they're sharing information about what they're seeing and, and what's being reported out there by the media, 
some of the some of the hotter topics you know you've seen with again this has been a we've evolved through this process already so right now seems to be the topic of a re-entry re-entry into the marketplace what does that look like what does that look like for industrial what does that look like for office um rents landlords that's that's another hot topic supply chain is a hot topic um tech in in this new and office environment how is tech going to play a role in tech support um ai's things like that so any insight or information that you can um, offer them and be the thought leader, the, the thought expert on that topic is, is going to be very useful to reporters right now. Um, again, if you don't have relationships and you want to find out how to establish relationships, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you to how to make that happen. Um, but uh, another way is that publications where a lot of publications were having conferences in the past, they are they've obviously switched over to webinars um, some of these webinars are pay for play panelist positions these are ways that you can for i think locally in chicago real estate journals uh, is having webinars and it's 750 dollars a panel to be a panelist on the webinar that's an indirect way to sort of get in front of that audience some of these webinars are far where far better attended than the in-person conferences that they were having uh, biz now is having webinar webinars so there are ways that you can also um, offer yourself or maybe even spend some dollars and, and do the pay for play to get in front of some of these publications as the readership that, that they have. Um, like Allison said, you know, draw from the inspiration from other core fact members, see what they're doing, look at their websites, look at our, again, I, shifting you back to the core fact website. Um, there's articles that are posted there from, from members. There are, um, press releases that are posted there. Look and see what tools we already have and how you can tailor that for yourself. And, and I would just add to what Patricia said, and I may, I may be stating the obvious here, but while Patricia isn't a staff member per se, she, she is contracted for 30 hours a month on behalf of you, our members. So as you can see on the screen right now, there's an article with Joe Latina that she worked closely with Joe on putting together. So just to reiterate, she's there for you, just like your staff is there for you. So take advantage. Thank you, Patricia. Sure. Um, we've got a few more minutes here. Are there any additional questions, comments, brilliant ideas? Free toilet paper with every lease that closes. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I could actually use the Lysol wipes, Jason. Um, so Frank, I would like to share, we, we chose to use this period in which, uh, of course, we have uh, very less demand. We chose to use it to revise our uh, sales strategies and our uh, sales strengths while building the entire website once again, but we are revising everything just in order to be back online uh, very strong when the market will come up. And we think this will happen in about six months here in Romania and in Europe in general. But maybe in United States, it's even bigger. But the sell part, I think it's a, it's, it's a good activity in this period. That's great advice, Marla. Use, use the time to uh, update all your marketing information and learn and play around with these tools uh, right now so that uh, they can be put to good use. Yes, because normally normally when we have business out there, we don't have time for the marketing properly. So now it's like a sort of heaven. Um, well, with that, I just want to say thank you again to, um, to Patricia, Kayla, Allison, and Jason for. Uh, given us your time here. And uh, please feel free to reach out to Corfac, myself, or any of the panelists if you have any questions or follow-up items. And uh, stay safe and have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye, everyone.